Hey all, Board Game Rants, where we'll find everything solo, tabletop, gaming, and more, and welcome to the end of the first quarter of 2021. Here is the MVPs for the month of March 2021. Let's get at it. Getting right after this list, after a long month of March, I'm wondering where the first quarter went, just, just flew by. And, you know, I'm looking outside right now and I'm, and I'm seeing sunshine here in, uh, in western Washington. And, you know, it kind of does this thing in early spring where it's like, oh, yeah, you're really in for a nice summer. And then it just shits on you, basically, with rain and yuck, gray for a while. So I know this is this is going to be short lived. This is, you know, Washington always teases you like that. But the weather certainly has feels like it's turning a lot of things feel like they're they're turning too along uh with the whole you know pandemic thing anyway a lot of a lot of hope on the horizon and so though still in march though there was still a lot of home time being at home and i got a lot of games in that would be 10 different games that i played 52 plays in all and let's get right after it. I, I'll start with Dwellings of, of Eldervale because that was uh, a game that I played eight more times here in the beginning of, of the month. I did a full review on that, so you can feel free to check that out if you'd like. More information on that big game. Very beautiful game, but check out my thoughts there if you're, if you're interested in general. I guess I'll, I'll, uh, well, I can, I can tell you that it was, and I'll get to, to, to this later on, some of the games that I, I did a great culling of, <laughs> of games here, uh, that I'll get to a little bit later. But Dwellings of Velvet Vale was one of those games. Mage Knight, six plays of Mage Knight. Mage Knight, I got the Ultimate Edition. Uh, I was able to sell the other stuff that I had. I was able to get the, the edition at a pretty good price, the Ultimate Edition. And so, I mean, like, why wouldn't I have, the favorite game of mine on the planet ever made. Why would I not have the Ultimate Edition? Well, because I couldn't justify the price. You know, I, I just I just couldn't. And But finally, I got uh, in a position where I could, and I did. I picked it up, and I got six plays of that in. Did a little playthrough as well, just because, I don't know why, I just felt like doing one. And because it's my favorite game, and it has this cool little variant that you can play. It's one day and one night. You can literally play it in, in an hour. And you get this cool little drafting startup to, to, to start with. And ugh, it's just that game just consistently solidifies why it's my favorite game. But if you want to see a little playthrough on that that I did, you might check that out. Bloodborne. I got six more plays of Bloodborne in. And Bloodborne I talked about at Nauseam last month. It was my MVP. And the six plays that I got in, again, a few of those were with my son. I have I have played this, I think, as much multiplayer as I have solo. And because I had mentioned it's like the only game in, I don't know, years that my son has actually been like, you know, hey, uh, can we play that again? Because it rocks. The game's awesome. And, and, and I love the game. Now, I got... A couple more expansions or I don't know maybe one or more I have you know I got I have the base game I got the little blood moon thing that uh, that came with Kickstarter I got this all on eBay too and I got uh, the hunter's dream expansion and the chalice dungeon or chalice expansion those are the only expansions I got I didn't really go after the expansions that did more stories I just wanted more more monsters and more difficulty and because yes when you go through the stories the chapter stories one through four of the base game and then there's chapters one through three in each one i was just looking for stuff to to add on to that because actually my son and i were we were found they, they weren't all that difficult you can get you can get you can get good at the game you can you can know you know hey i shouldn't overextend myself yeah uh, you know because you can just end up defenseless when everything activates and there's positioning to it and and all sorts of stuff there's a lot of luck too but uh, but you know that the game is the game's atmosphere. A little luck here and there is just supposed to be there, you know, and it, and it has that that feeling too in the video game. So you know, it's just it's all it's all there. It's all right. It feels good to me. This board game, I love it. And but I was a little disappointed with the the Hunter's Dream expansion. Well, I wasn't disappointed with the expansion. It just didn't do what I thought it would do. It added. Because <laughs> I wanted, you know, to run the Chalice Dungeon, which is which is very difficult. I mean, solo, 
I don't even think I've won Chalice, a Chalice Dungeon solo, but it's a great way to just do a one-off of this game. You can go through all the stories that come with Bloodborne, and you can, you can buy all the expansions, too, that have the stories, and those are cool. But to just play like a one-off, just, just random creatures and a random boss plays pretty quick, and it's brutally difficult. And when I got the Hunter's Dream, I thought, okay, cool, I can add a little bit more difficulty or, or something, a little more spice to, to the game. I mean, it's got enough, but I just wanted more. Way too difficult. <laughs> just way too difficult for me, anyway. And so I was kind of disappointed that I can't really integrate the Hunter's Dream with the Chalice Dungeon. It, it's more, and it even says, you know, it adds on, the Hunter's Dream expansion adds on to a chapter, onto the the main story, any story. And, and when you're all leveled up after Chapter 3, if you beat it, you go into this Chapter 4, which, you know, and... and, and, and and it's going to be tough. I, I haven't tried it yet. I haven't tried it that way. I just wanted the little extra monsters and I wanted, you know, to just walk into a room and have a sudden little mini boss show up. But not recommended in the Chalice Dungeon. There's already too much difficulty there. So, so I couldn't integrate it with the way I wanted to, but it wasn't, I can see that it really wasn't designed to, to do that anyway. So moving on, though, I got six more plays of, of Bloodborne. No weird one. Mansions of Madness, second edition. I got two games of that in just because it was a game that I was looking to sell and among a bunch of games that I was looking to sell. But Mansion of Madness, you know, it's a very high rated solo game. And it's just it's in that 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 Arkham Horror family and very loved and for good reason. And I sold it, but not because it was a bad game. Not at all. It's just it is one of those games, though, that that you have to really love the the story and really love it. It's, it's an app game too, so you have to have an app. You have to run it through this app. And I mean, and you would want to because that's what makes the game so so wonderful and so so narrative driven. And but I over and over again prove to myself that I'm not that into narrative driven games. I can be for a little bit, but they get old really quick for me because well, especially with this this game, I mean, there's tons of expansions, so you, you could like almost endlessly go through story after story and, and come across new stuff. But I, <laughs> I just, it does get repetitive to me, you know, and I, I actually stopped through my I was almost done anyway, I think, with the, the second game that I was playing. But I was already into it for like a couple hours because you can just I don't know, you can just you just wander around and you, once you find something, it just you just got to find the thing, you know, and you got to wander around long enough to find the thing so that you can continue on. And but once you've found the thing, well, now you've I mean, that story, you can't really play it over again because you just know where to find the thing or things in, in the order that you need to find the things and and the little puzzly aspects to it. There's fun little puzzle things that, that just you, you play on the on the app, which, you know, I'm playing. I, I like playing a game on the on the, the board. I want physicality, and so. It, but that kind of takes it away from from the gameplay. The board gameplay is all these. There's a lot. Not a lot, but these little puzzle things, which are fun. But it's just not what I'm looking for in a game. And all of the story, all the narrative is not. It's just not. Um, I can't. I can only do it for so long, and then it's just like, yep, I'm done. Time to move on. So, uh, I had only played this game. Three times in total, actually. One time when I first got it, I don't know, a year or two ago. Multiplayer. We just played it once and no one seemed really that interested to play it again. Um, and then I just tried it again two times. Sold that game. But uh, it would absolutely, for someone that, that wants, it's beautifully designed and, and implemented in, in the way that it's implemented is, is insanely just incredible. I mean, it's a well, it was, it was put together by by designs i think that that probably had to do with i don't know eldritch horror arkham horror or all the other arkham horror offs board game wise you know put into this game and it's just and it was a second edition of course so it was just just beautiful game it really and i can see a lot of people i can see why people like this game so much but it wasn't for me moving on real quickly isle of cats got a quick multiplayer game of isle of cats in actually it was the first time i played multiplayer with you know Outside of the, the family, it comes with a little family edition you can play, but we played it full on, you know, the way it's using, utilizing all the, the mechanics and it was good. Uh, my, my daughter crushed us, uh, <laughs> but um, I don't know. I, I think we all still liked it. I hope 
the the family will play it again. But Isle of Cats uh, is also just an awesome solo game, and I enjoy the heck out of it there too. But uh, did play one game of that, and it was multiplayer. Going on, code names. We also played, you know, sticking with the multiplayer theme here for a second. We got two games of code names in as well. And that, you know, Vladish Fatel, same guy that did Mage Knight. You wouldn't, you wouldn't think it. You know, who, who, who would, who, who would, what mind could, could make something so simple and sophisticated as code names? And then, and, you know, but also develop, you know, Mage Knight. <laughs> just, just a weird, just a weird uh, uh, genius that designer has, Vladish Fatel. But a couple games of code name names. So now, um, and I've, I've just touched on this game, but I just had to pick it up because, it, you know, it's very reasonably priced, and that is Under Falling Skies. Under Falling Skies, I, I did a little playthrough of the print and play a while back because <clears throat> it was just so much hoopla about it. And and I knew, too, that it was getting a an actual printed version of it to come out retail. And But I had no real plans to pick it up, but I was at my, you know, FLGS, and I and I just did. It was like, you know, it was like 30 bucks, and... And it was so heavy. I mean, the little, it's, uh, well, it's right, where, where is it? Right there. It, I mean, this is, the print and play just comes with with the way that you play, you know, one-off, one-off, one-off. But looking at the back of the, the game, it, there's like a campaign. And, it, and it's really cool. It's systematically, you know, it's stacked in the box so that you only open up just enough to learn the game. Then you can learn, like, the full game. And then if you keep going down the box of goodies, you can play a campaign. And I've only played it twice. I just played the simple way it, you know, introduces you to the game. I mean, the game's not hard, not hard at all. And then I played the full version, but I've yet to get into the campaign. Um, <clears throat> I stopped because uh, all of a sudden I found out Cloudspire, my expansion stuff just showed up. And so it was like, Arr! you know, everything got put on hold. That's what I have on my, my table right now. But so I do plan on getting back to uh, Under Falling Skies, but uh, it's just, yeah, I, you know, it's, I can, <laughs> it's, it's a very, simple mechanics but it's just wonderfully done you just watch a review on on that i might do one later once i've once i've played into through the campaign and stuff but uh, but it's it's low on the, the heavy range but it still offers just lots of cool mechanics and things to think about in kind of a space invaders board game fashion now moving on to the i guess the the, the disappointment of the month and that would be and i did a, a review on this that would be roman roll now Roman Roll is, is a perfectly fine game, and I haven't I haven't gotten rid of it, and I don't know that I will. Uh, it's just I I just I just I wanted it to be a, a thing, and it wasn't that thing, and it wasn't designed to be that thing. So it's no fault of the game. Again, it's just my own personal taste. It's definitely heavier for a roll and write, which I do like. Roll and writes tend to be light. I don't have a tremendous amount of experience with roll and writes, but I did a full review on this. You might check that out. But this was, I think, uh, yeah, I have seen interesting, a couple couple comments on it that, that people said, you know, it shouldn't have been a, a roll and write. There's enough there to, you should have had the bits and pieces and stuff to um, just make a full-on board game. And I think it could very well have been a full-on board game. But I think, I think David Turchy and whatever, Nick Shaw, <laughs> were like, well, let's make a roll and write. And they did, but then, you know, it got out of hand. <laughs> I don't think it was, <clears throat> I don't think they were, I, I, I think it went that way versus the other way that they, they designed a board game and they were like, now let's make this a roll and write. Now I think they, they tried to do a roll and write and then, and then just by their nature and designing games and just in creating heavier games, <clears throat> it got to where it got, <clears throat> excuse me, but they just uh, kept it as a roll and write. So, but whatever. Anyway, <laughs> I, uh, lots of comments on that. You might check out uh, the, the review there. Now, two more games. Um, did I say Roman Roll? I got six plays in. Okay, moving on. Ginkopolis. So there's there's a little bit of a of a tie here, I think, with the MVP because I couldn't really come up with it. So so Ginkopolis though did a full review on this. I got eleven plays in. I've even played it a couple more times this month because I also did a little a little playthrough. I had, I had one request uh, that said, hey, you know, I'd be interested if you did a playthrough. And because I'm not sold on the game. And then I was looking, I was like, wow, okay, I'm sure someone's done that on YouTube. But I didn't really find any. I, I didn't look all that hard, granted, but I didn't see anybody that really done a, a solo playthrough of Ginkopolis. And, well, the game came out years ago. and just came out with its next print, 
So maybe people haven't got around to it. But anyway, so you can check that out. Uh, I did a full review. I did a little playthrough of that as well. Um, this game, it, it just it just it just works for me. It has a beautiful mix of solid mechanics that were done extremely. I just think that they were they were put together in a way that uh, that that flows in this cool seamless fashion and that, that moves at such a pace that few games achieve. And along with you know somewhat of a a, a minimal amount of setup and in a way that I could manipulate it so that I, I was able to play the solo variant my way, utilizing a non-static way, but utilizing all the cards, kind of the startup cards that, that the multiplayer would, would have. Anyway, you can check out the review and the playthrough to get a better sense of Ginkopolis, but I got 11 plays of that in, and I enjoyed every game of it. That's, that's going nowhere in my collection. Is it like top 10 material for, for the year? I don't think so. I mean, it depends. The way the year's been going, maybe. <laughs> Because the only thing I can think of right now that's going to make it is Bloodborne. But uh, at any rate, so what's in competition with? Kind of an oddity here, and that is Kanban. I have just the original Kanban, but Eevee came out, and oh, I'll put it up on the screen. There was a person who, who made a, a, a an, not an app, but just a, a way you can utilize. I think it is. Maybe it is a phone app. Or maybe it's just a website. Anyway, that incorporates how the, the, the solo variant of Kanban EV so that you don't even need it. So you don't even need the cards. You can just use the app. Now, you still have to learn. First, you have to know how to play Kanban to utilize this, this solo you know, app. Then you have to know the differences because Kanban EV was totally redone compared to the, the version of Kanban that I have. And, and it kind of works top down, whereas my version of Kanban works left to right. And, and there's all these things, like the cards that are different colors and the, the cubes are different colors. You know, the cubes aren't even, they're actual car parts. And there's, you know, Kanban is, is a heavy game, a, a, a Vito Lacerda game. And has always been, you know, something I've been interested in. I played Kanban with fan-made variants and, it's allowed me to play it, and that's so it's been enough to keep it in my collection. It's not going anywhere, but I couldn't get myself to justify pulling the trigger and getting EV just because it's just so expensive. And fortunately, again, this per the BGG user made a way that I could that I could try. But I had to, but so I guess what I'm getting is I had to do this weird conversion thing. I had to try and guess what some of the the cubes color were i had to kind of okay well green's going to be white and you know purple is going to be more well, i forget what the what the exactly what color i had to decide was going to when it came up in the app i was going to use this color in my version of the game and then again the kind of the left to right versus top to bottom and you just wonder i, I don't know if stuff was i'm sure stuff was lost in the translation so but i got eight plays of it in all the same and but you gotta be, you gotta have the rules for your edition, my edition of Kanban. Then you, I printed out the solo rules uh, for for EV. Then you've got the, you gotta have a, a you know, a little, uh, you know, pad or something running the the electric version, uh, electronic version of of the AI that David Churchy came up with. And you're gonna be kind of shuffling around. It's, it's a study. It's a study in trying to get this to work. Was it worth it for me? Totally. I. I love this this game, and I love the AI version. Of course, it was David Churchill that did it. Now, David, that that's what he does. That's what he does best, in my opinion. Is he goes, he takes other designers' fabulous games and creates solo variants for them. That's his thing, and and I love it when he does that thing. Not a big fan of David Churchill's personally designed games, not nearly as much. But when he designs solo variant AIs. I don't know that anyone does it better for other designers. And I hope this is a trend. I hope that Vita Lacerda, who I think would typically add in a solo AI variant official, they they were just always were, were lacking each one in kind of in, in many ways for me. I think one of his best done one was CO2 Second Chance that, that he personally did. Uh, his My favorite game of Vita Lacerda's is still on Mars, although I was not a big fan of the AI. But the same person that did the electronic version of, of Kanban EV solo 
also did something with on Mars that I utilized. I didn't. I, I think I, I just realized that it was the same person. So anyway, I'm very grateful to that person for, for doing these things so that I can enjoy Vita Lacerda games, playing the AI solo variants, and Kanban was awesome. And I, I, I don't know that I can do a review on it so much because I don't know. I, there's... There, there, there could be stuff that I'm that I'm, I'm not playing right or I'm not translating right because there's just a lot to, a lot of I mean it's a heavy game too so <laughs> there's a lot of you're juggling a lot of balls there and so I don't want to comment too much on it you know but I but I can say that uh, I enjoy the game and I enjoy what David Churchy has done in creating the solo variant because it works wonderfully it is really smooth and and I know that if I had the official Kanban EV, it would be even smoother because everything, I wouldn't have to translate left to right, up to down, color to color, that sort of thing. Car to car, because sometimes, I mean, there's different cars now. There's like, instead of a, an SUV, it's a truck. And there's, you know, <laughs> you wonder if you got the right color of car, you know, doing the right thing. So, but wonderful. Um, I tend to get my butt kicked. Uh, there's there's ways you could level up. You can increase the difficulty. I uh, don't know. I mean, um, there's sometimes when I'm playing this game that I just lose, you know, after the first meeting, there's typically about, uh, five, uh, what do you call them? Scoring opportunities, either three meetings and, and two end of weeks or three end of week and two meetings. And the end of week scorings are really easy. The meeting scorings are kind of difficult and just weird, <laughs> but, uh, there's times where I just lose this game. If you ever end up below zero victory points, you the game's over. And sometimes the AI just picks like this certain action that uh, that just just crushes you and just scores so many points in that first end of week. It's almost always an end of week scoring that you're gonna have first, and and you lose, and the game's pretty quick. <laughs> Which I don't. I so that what has made, made me think that maybe I'm not playing it right um because it just seems like huh that was weird i mean how did they score that many points i even tried to stop it you know once and once i feel like i was able to and another time i was just like there was just no way i could stop them scoring all these points and me losing the game which seemed a little weird so again i don't know if i'm playing it exactly right but that's why there's kind of this tie between mvps because i still enjoy the game of kanban and i and i really enjoy the the the, the quick yet kind of sophisticated and with all this luck and stuff perfectly mixed together of Gink Ginkopolis. So uh, that's that. Those are the games that I played. Um, what else got? I mean, I, I think I could have had a lot more than 52 plays in this past month, except for video games kind of got in the way of my board game, even though I still got quite a bit of board game. I think I just would have gotten more in except for frickin Valheim. Valheim is just, I mean, it's like so many other games there where you just, you start off just kind of with a loincloth or whatever. And, uh, you know, maybe a little like Kingdom Death Monster. I don't know. <laughs> where you just, you just kind of, and you've got, you got nothing. You got nothing. You're just naked. And with a little, with a little loincloth. And you got to go out and just become and level up your, your building yourself. So in a way, I guess it is a little bit like Kingdom Death Monster. And... Oh, I've, I've, I've played so much, 40 plus hours of uh, Valheim have I gotten into over this past month. And then I got myself and my family into Stardew Valley because you can do a little, you can do a little co-op split screen. And so, and then, and then, and then I'd be playing, you know, on my TV next to him while, while my daughter and my wife are playing that. So we played, you know, I, I personally probably got maybe 10 hours or so of uh, Stardew Valley. And, and I was interested in that. What spawned that, of course, was the board game Stardew Valley came out. And, you know, it's kind of difficult to get a hold of. I'm still interested in getting a hold of it. I probably will down the line if, if depending on, you know, what it looks like here. But that, that's what kind of spawned all this, actually was the board game Stardew Valley, which led to, oh, let's pick up these games, and then, oh, what's this Valheim thing? <laughs> Woo! Valheim, I'm, I'm like day in the 80s of days there on Valheim, and each, each uh, I think each day and night is, is 30 minutes, so that's why I know I've played, you know, 40 plus hours of this game. Anyway, so, uh, so lots of good gaming done in, in March. Sold tons of games there, and, um, because, yeah, you know, this collection here is just, it's been getting out of hand for a long time. 
and I've just been running out of room. I started stacking stuff downstairs in the basement, and I was just like, you know, I need to do something about this. I mean, there's so many games, so many games that people could be enjoying that I don't play anymore, or that I that I think I'm gonna play, but I just, but I know I'm never gonna get to kind of thing. And so I sold so many, and even good games I sold. And I'm thinking of kind of just doing a full list of this, but uh, <clears throat> you know, of, of the list that I just went over, my my MVP list here, Dwellings of Elder Vale and Mansions of Madness were two games that I that I sold. Um, but that was almost, almost, almost 30. Maybe I'll just kind of do a big culling video on that. Maybe, perhaps. Just to kind of explain myself. And so you can see what I got rid of. What am I looking forward to? What's on my table? Cloudspire. All the expansions. Horizons Wrath. Uh, what's the other one? I don't know. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. But lots of goodies came in for that. That, that, I, that I have started playing. But I'm not going to comment on those yet. But Cloudspire of Chip Theory Games. Of too many bones, which y'all know how I feel about too many bones. But Cloud Spire, which is its own <laughs> man, it is <laughs> that is again, it's you, you got to really be into heavy games to kind of appreciate these things because you got to, you know, Cloud Spire, you got to read through the rule book for multiplayer, then you got to read through the rules for to how to run the solo AI, then each, <laughs> each, uh, scenario has its own set of rules, and then you've got all the the little talents and all the abilities and you got your you're shuffling you're shuffling different reference sheets all the time and if you're not into that sort of thing you're not going to be into cloud spire but i've got that up totally looking forward to getting it out and also viscounts of the the west kingdom i've had that and i got that actually a little while ago a couple weeks ago but i just you know haven't got to it but i'm looking forward to, to getting into that as well and aside from that i think that's that's about it Thank you. Uh, I have appreciated a lot of um, it's pretty strong growth in the channel, and, and and I'm very thankful for that. And also too, I've kind of learned more too about the advertising and stuff like that. And as I as I continue to get a little bit more serious about about videos and putting out videos and whatnot, um, I've come also kind of understand that you know it, the importance of, of certain things. And so one of those things, if if you don't mind, because I'm trying to find a way to develop the channel and and, and create you know some sort of a little bit of revenue, a little something, but but not interfere with people's enjoyment of it. And there's this weird balance to try and strike. And uh, but one of those things I think is 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 very simple that I you know to ask you to do, and that is, yeah, if you if you like the video, I guess when you hit that like button, it does something to the YouTube algorithm and it sends it out to uh, lots more people to to. It has a better chance of being seen, and of course, with that better chance of being seen, then more people can subscribe to it, which can like the video, which gets it more of a chance. So this is a sort of snowball effect and it's free and all you don't even have to smash it. You know, just, just touch the like button. I don't want you to break anything, but if you don't mind and you did like the video, I think, I think it helps out a lot to, to do these things. And it's something very simple you could do, uh, uh, for me and for the channel, which will allow me to, again, it, it perpetuates and allows me to get into a zone where I can just, you know, be incentivized to, to put out more videos without burning out just because, because you just, you just, I, I like the feeling of growth and, <clears throat> and, and moving forward and things kind of blossoming in a sense. I don't know, maybe I'm into the spring mindset, you know, right now, the seasons. <laughs> but uh, anyway, thank you so much. I've rambled on long enough and I appreciate you hanging in there with the rambling. Until next video, I'm Board Game Rants and I'm out.